morning, Transformers, again, and praise the name of the living God. Welcome again on this beautiful Tuesday morning as we continue sharing in the name of Jesus. I'm reading from the book of Esther, chapter number 4, verse number 14. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. As we continue sharing from the story of Esther and learning some things that we can be able to go with even as we pursue our purpose, I'm looking at the point of being persistent. And being persistent is the act of following up to the end. It is the act of not giving up. It is the act of making a decision that I'm going to continue until I get the, to the end of the journey. And so Mordecai is speaking to Esther and is telling Esther, we need help. You are in the palace. We are at the gates. The Jews are spread all over. But you've been in the palace for a purpose. This is where we discover that when we have discovered our purpose in God, we pursue it to the end. We are persistent concerning it. There are many things that arose in the days of Esther. There are many things that she faced. There was opposition at the gates. There was Haman who was standing at the gates as, a, as, a, as an opposition. But then Mordecai is standing at the gates and is telling Esther, understand the purpose why you are in the, in the palace at such a time as this. You cannot be able to be in the purpose, in the purpose of God without being a person who, who is persistent. And then you have to understand that once the Lord is calling us to a place of persistence is in the midst of the opposition, in the midst of the many things that will happen in our day, you have to make a decision that I'm not giving up. I will not quit. I will follow up to the end. So the counsel of Mordecai to Esther was, yes, you know that you're in the palace at such a time as this. If you do not do the things that you're supposed to do, our help as the Jews will come from somewhere else. Nevertheless, you and your father's house will perish. Now look at a woman or a man who has made a decision to be persistent in the things of God concerning pursuing her purpose or his purpose. Is that there are many things that will arise. There are, there are many things that you will wake up to in the morning and you have no reason to continue. There are things that will arise in your day and you feel like you wish you were not in the palace at such a time as this. There are so many discouragement that even come in our day, but I pray that in the name of Jesus, we will purpose to be persistent in our walk in faith. I was looking at the book of um, uh, Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 13, and Paul is writing and he's saying, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are ahead. Paul is making a decision here and he's saying, one thing I have purpose is that I will be persistent. Persistence means that I will wake up in, in the morning and make a decision. Yes, I know there are testimonies that I got yesterday. Yes, I know there are things that I achieved yesterday. But then he was saying, I make a decision. I will be persistent. I will rise up in the morning and I will pursue that which I have for the sake of where we are going. And so he says, one thing I have decided is that I have forgotten the things that are past. And this is the place where a persistent person in God keeps forgetting about the achievements of yesterday. Not from a place that we do not appreciate the things God has allowed us to go through in the former days, but then that those things can be used as a tool to deter us from pursuing God for the sake of the day that we are in. I want to encourage us this morning in the name of Jesus that even as we pursue our purpose in God and even as we choose to mount up with wings like eagles, that we will purpose to persist on that thing that the Lord has called us to do. What is it that you've discovered as your purpose in God? What is this that is rising up against you that you're looking up at things and you're thinking this is not working? I want to encourage us in the name of Jesus. May we be persistent in our walk in God. May we be persistent in pursuing our purpose in God in the mighty name of Jesus. So one of the things that Esther did concerning pursuing God and concerning being consistent is that she made a decision. When she got the word from the gates from, the, from Mordecai, she purposed that she's going to do her part. And so one of the things that she did is that she called uh, the girls that were with her in the camp to a place of prayer. A person who is persistent in the things of God is a person who is persistent on her knees. The minute you have learned the act of being on your knees concerning pursuing your purpose in God, you are going to go far. She called these girls and says, let's go to a three days fast and then I will also make a purpose and I will also make a point of going I will, be, I will be able to go to the king. I know it is not a good time for me to go to the king, but nevertheless, I will go to the king. I will, after the place of prayer, I will stand and act. Because in the place of prayer, 
even as we persist on our knees, the Lord will give us the strategies on what we need to do at a given time. So she rose up and she says, yes, I have heard the word. But one thing is that after we have heard the word of God, after we have heard the direction that the Lord has in store for us, then we rise up and go in the place of action. This is the place of prayer. And again, I will say even as we shared yesterday, that in the place of preparation, in the place of prayer, in the place of persistence, is a place that is a secret place where the Lord will teach you. He, he, he's the one who taught Esther together with the girls on the strategy that she would use for the sake of Haman being uh, brought down and for the sake of the Jews being rescued. So in the place of persistence, the Lord will teach you prayer. In the place of prayer, the Lord will teach you the strategies that you need at a given time. So she went and she called the girls and she said, let's take a three days fast. And it, it may not be three days for you. Maybe it could be a day. Maybe it could be half a day. But then it is in that place where you persist in the presence of God. You are not in a rush to leave. You are pursuing the presence of God on your knees. You are asking God, what is it that you want me to do? What is it? I'm not giving up. I purpose in that place of prayer that I will wait until the Lord gives me a word concerning where he wants me to go. So I want us to be encouraged in the word of God that we are not among them who look back. We are not among them who give up when things are not working. We are not among them who are easily uh, persuaded to leave the place God has called us to be in the name of Jesus. And so we see this girl waiting in the presence of God three days. Maybe to us three days is like a, a, a whole year to somebody depending on the intensity of the things that you're committing before God. But then I want us to be encouraged in the word of God that a woman who is pursuing her purpose in God has to be a woman who is persistent, has to be a woman who knows her place, has to be a woman who knows her way back to the altar, has to be a woman who understands the season that she is in. So be encouraged in the word of God that in that place of prayer, in that place of persistence, you will be able to get the answer that you need at a given time. The results that we see as Esther persisted are not only found in the three days of prayer, but this was a preparation ground for her. But even as she waited in the presence of God for the three days, God gave her a word. God gave her a strategy. And even as we said yesterday, we do not see God written, uh, the, but, but his words are evident in the book of Esther. And so we see the strategy that God gave unto her is that in the days coming after the book of Esther chapter number four, that she prepares a banquet for the sake of Haman. She goes and if after the place of prayer, after persisting for the three days, she goes to the presence of the king and the king gives her the go ahead and says, I just want you to give me a chance to be able to prepare a banquet. These are the secrets that the Lord teaches a woman who is persistent on her knees. These are the things that the Lord reveals to the heart of a woman. Maybe never be in a rush. I know in the programs that we have in the day, we are busy doing very many things, catching up with time. But every new day that the Lord has given unto us is a clean plate that you can be able to put and download the things that the Spirit of God has for you. But then you cannot be a woman who is in a rush. You cannot be a woman who goes to the place of prayer with a watch that you are timing the, 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 the hours that you're going to be in the presence of God or even the minutes that you're going to be in the presence of God. But in the place of persistence, the Lord will be able to teach you that you should not be in a hurry that you can wait and be still in him, that you'll be quiet and in his presence. But even as you persist, you'll be able to get your priorities in order. And so even as we continue, I pray, may we be persistent in that place of prayer. May we not be in a rush to leave that place of prayer. But even as we go there, let the Lord give you the word that you need at a given time in the mighty name of Jesus. So we see that even as this woman persisted, in that place of prayer and got the strategy. This is the strategy that marked the redemption of the Jews. What is it that you have been waiting in the presence of God? Have you been a rush to leave or have you been persistent in waiting in the presence of God? In that place, the Lord will reveal to you the plan that he has for you. In that place of waiting, in that place as you persist, there are things that you're going to overcome. There are things that have been fighting you that can only be fought in the place of persistence. And I want us to be encouraged that even in this season, be persistent in the place of prayer in, 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 in God. In this place, the Lord will give you the connections that you need. It is in that place of persistence that the Lord will tell you this is what you need at a given time. In that place of persistence, the Bible says that Esther brought in other girls to be able to fast together with her. It is in this place of persistence in prayer that the Lord gives you the right connections that you give at a given time. We need to get to a place where we understand that at every juncture that the Lord is going to reveal his purpose concerning you, at a given time, he will give you the connections that you, that you need. There's no woman, there's no man who is a lone ranger. That is why we need interpersonal skills on how we relate with one another. And in this place, the Lord will reveal 
reveal to you the connections that you need at a given time. In every new season that the Lord is giving you to be able to, to face, he knows the connections that you need. He knows the connections that you need to drop. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, as you persist in that place, as you sit and you be quiet. That is why as we go back to our theme verse, Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait, it is in that place of waiting persistently waiting on God, that the Lord will allocate the destiny helpers that you need at your gates. He will bring the connections that you need at a given time. He will bring you the men and the women as resources that you need at a given time. Even as he did it in the days of Esther, Mordecai was one of these connections that she needed. He stood at the gates, yes, but then, at the time that she needed a Rema word, it was this man who was sitting at the gates that said, if you do not step up in your place, if you do not step up in your position, our help will still come from somewhere else. It was the naked truth that Esther needed, that yes, she was in the palace, yes, she was enjoying the goodies of the palace, but then she had to be reminded of her purpose in God. Have you been reminded, who's standing at the gates who can bring some, uh, s some sense of direction and tell you, do you know why you're in that position at such a time as this? Do you know what you need to do? Do you know that you still need prayer? Do you know that you still need prayer warriors at your gates? Do you know that you cannot be able to live? Do you know that you have to pursue your purpose in God, even in that position that the Lord has given unto you? So even as we learn from the book of Esther, yes, you could be in the palace, but do not let the goodness of the palace rob you of the purpose of God that you know that you know that you're supposed to be a redeemer for the sake of the Jews, that you're supposed to be a voice for your generation. You're supposed to be a voice for the sake of your people. You're supposed to be someone who is standing in as a mediator for the sake of your people. It is those people who are standing at your gates that will bring that um, place, that you to a place of understanding, that you're not only here to enjoy the day, you're not only here to be able to enjoy that, that, that which you have in that position that you are in, but you are there to represent the kingdom of God. You are there to fulfill the purpose of God. You are there to do the things that the Lord has in store for you. So I pray in the name of Jesus, may you be able to persistently follow up on the purpose that God has for you at a given time. And for the sake of the people God has anointed you for, you cannot leave the place of prayer. You have to be persistent. So it is my prayer today that in this Tuesday morning, be a persistent man, be a persistent woman, be a woman who waits on God. So in the place of persistence is the place where the Lord will lift you up. We say it again, that the place of mounting up is founded on the place of waiting. And the place of waiting is a place of persistence. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, none of us will be left out in the place of waiting. None of us will be left out in the place of persistence. None of us will miss out on the mark in the mighty name of Jesus. So even as we come to a close of this Tuesday morning, allow me to pray together with you that the Lord will allow you to be able to sit in that place of waiting, persistently waiting on him until he gives you a word. And maybe you could be there and you're saying you have waited for too long and I can let you know that our God is never in a rush. He comes at the right time. Sometimes he will keep you a little bit longer so that he may mold you to become what he wants you to be. That sometimes he will keep you a little bit longer so that he may be able to allow you to understand intently that which he has for you for the sake of your generation in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe for the sake of the season of the Lord the Lord is taking you into, you need to wait a little bit longer. Maybe for the sake of the people the Lord is preparing you for, you have to wait a little bit longer. If Mordecai had not spoken to Esther on that day, he was still saying, remember, our help is in the presence of God. And this is the assurance that we have. Our help is in the presence of God. But blessed is that man, blessed is that woman who has allowed the Lord to involve her or him in partnership in the place of waiting for the sake of the manifestation of the power and the glory of God. May you be that person who will not leave before you have heard a word for your generation. May you be that woman who will not be nourished before the Lord is done with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So regardless of how long you may have waited, I want to encourage us today wait a little bit longer until you get the key of the access of the things that the Lord has for you. Do not be in a rush to leave. But then in the place of persistence, I pray, may you not leave empty-handed, but may you wait until the Lord has given you that which he has prepared for the sake of where he's taking you. So allow us to pray even as we come to a close in the name of Jesus. Father, it is not easy for us to be able to be persistent. It is not even in our nature unless you teach us. And I pray that by the help of the Holy Spirit of God, we will be taught that in that place of waiting, we will be persistent. It is that one agenda that you have in store for us. It is for the sake of the purpose of our 
our generation that Lord we do not want to leave so I pray that Lord we will be persistent I pray that Lord you will teach us persistence by the help of the Holy Spirit of God I pray that Lord you will help us to wait a little bit longer until you give us a word a rema word for our season but I also pray that in that place of persistence oh God we will live with a key that we can open the doors for our generation so Father we pray that even as you teach us in this place of persistence none of us will live oh God in the mighty name of Jesus but in persistence it is that we will knock and until that door is open. We will wait until we get that answer that, Lord, you'll be glorified. So, Father, we honor you and we give you praise. And even as you keep us in this place, oh God, I pray, our purposes will be fulfilled and that, Father God, you'll be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Looking forward to see you tomorrow, even as we continue on what the Lord has in store for us. God bless you and keep you and sustain you. In Jesus' name, amen.